Chapter 10 of Essays and Dialogues. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Essays and Dialogues by Giacomo Leopardi. Translated by Charles Edwards. Chapter 10 Dialogue between the Earth and the Moon. The Earth, Red. By Abai. Moon, read by Todd. Dear Moon, I know that you can speak and answer questions like a human being, for I have heard so from many of the poets. Besides, our children say you have really a mouth, nose, and eyes like everyone else, and that they see them with their own eyes, which at their time of life ought to be very sharp as for me no doubt you know that i am a person indeed when i was young i had a number of children so you will not be surprised to hear me speak and the reason my fine moon why i have never uttered a word to you before although i have been your neighbour for i don't know how many centuries is that i have been so occupied as to have no time for gossip but now my business is so trifling that it can look after itself I don't know what to do, and I'm ready to die of ennui. So, in future, I hope we may often have some talk together, and I should like to know all about your affairs, if it does not inconvenience you to recount them to me. Be easy on that score. May the fates never trouble me more than you are likely to. Talk as much as you please, and although, as I believe you know, I am partial to silence, I will willingly listen and reply to oblige you. Do you hear the delightful sound made by the heavenly bodies in motion? To tell you the truth, I hear nothing. <sighs> Nor do I, save only the whistling of the wind, which blows from my poles to the equator, and from the equator to the poles, and which is far from musical. But Pythagoras asserts that the celestial spheres make an incredibly sweet harmony, and that you take part in the concert and are the eighth chord of this universal lyre. As for me, I am so deafened by my own noise that I hear nothing. I also am doubtless deafened, since I hear no more than you. But it is news to me that I am a chord. Now, let us change the subject. Tell me... Are you really inhabited, as thousands of ancient and modern philosophers affirm, from Orpheus to de la Lande? In spite of all my efforts to prolong these horns of mine, which men call mountains and hills, and from the summit of which I look at you in silence, I have failed to discern a single one of your inhabitants. Yet I am told that a certain David Fabricius, whose eyes were keener than those of Lynceus, at one time observed your people extending their linen to be dried by the sun. I know nothing about your horns. I will admit that I am inhabited. What color are your men? What men? <laughs> those that you contain. Did you not say you were inhabited? Yes. What then? Does it not follow that all your inhabitants are animals? Neither animals nor men, though I am really in ignorance as to the nature of either the one or the other. As for the men you speak of, I have not an idea what you mean. Then what sort of creatures are yours? They are of very many different kinds, as unknown to you as yours are to me. This is so strange that if you yourself had not informed me of it, I would never have believed it. Were you ever conquered by any of your inhabitants? Not that I know of. But how? And for what reason? Oh, through ambition and jealousy, by means of diplomacy and arms. I do not know what you mean by arms, ambition, and diplomacy. Indeed, I understand nothing of what you say. But surely if you do not understand the meaning of arms, you know something of war. Because not long ago, a certain doctor discovered through a telescope, which is an instrument for seeing a long distance, 
that you possessed a fine fortress with proper bastions. Now, this is certain proof that your races are at any rate accustomed to sieges and mural battles. Pardon me, Mother Earth, if I reply to you a little more at length than would be expected from one so subjugated as it seems I am. But in truth, you appear to me more than vain to imagine that everything in the world is conformable to your things, as if nature had no other intention than to copy you exactly in each of her creations. I tell you I am inhabited, and you jump to the conclusion that my inhabitants are men. I assert that they are not, and whilst admitting that they may be another race of beings, you endow them with qualities and customs similar to those of your people. You also speak to me about the telescope of a certain doctor. But it seems to me the sight of those telescopes is about as good as that of your children, who discover that I have eyes, a mouth, and a nose, all of which I am ignorant of possessing. <laughs> 